video fashion models. The most beautiful models of all time is the most gorgeous model competition series. We're counting down 100 exceptionally exquisite faces and physiques in fashion, from the girls next door to timeless beauties, to models with extraordinary features. We're ranking the most attractive girls in the business. In this program, we're counting down the models with the most luscious lips. From bee stung to rosebud, these premier pouts have the most pucker power. Meet Lindsay. I don't know where I get my lips from. I, I can't tell you that. Ajuma. My friends, my teachers, they always told me, oh, you should be a model. Allie. It's just kind of like, I'm here, I'm enjoying it, and that's the most important thing, really. Abby. You're walking out in front of like hundreds of people that are all looking at you, and the only light is a spotlight right at your face. Irina. First, I mean, I found it a little bit weird, you know, because I've never thought I, I could be a model. Louise. I got spotted on the train. Well, I didn't believe them at first, really. I was just laughing, and I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Daphne. Every season, it's so different, and I love to be backstage with all the girls. And Laura. Should I laugh more? That was the first question I asked me, like, why don't you ever smile? <laughs> Watch and find out which of these eight stunners is number one on our list. And you two can choose your favorite. And to kick off the countdown at number eight, it's Arena K. Hello, I'm Arena K. My agency found me in Moscow in the restaurant. Yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> I started in New York first. I mean, I found it a little bit weird, you know, because I've never thought I, I could be a model, so. But then I thought about it and I was like, yeah, let's try it. <laughs> uh, I started with the Calvin Klein exclusive. When you have a good start, it's easier for you. Arena has learned to keep her cool in the hectic world of fashion. Like, you have to run around and, like, I mean, you cannot get mad at people, you know, even you like, stressed or something. So you have to just, like, stay quite calm because, you know, it's lots, lots of things going on, like, on the backstage and on the shootings. And sometimes, like, it's just, like, freaking you out. But anyway, you have to stay, like, calm and just do your job. I just go to Moscow all the time, I'm free, and just, you know, stay with my mother and my friends. And at that point, they're not surprised when they see me, but they just, like, you know, they're really excited, like, happy, like, asking me, oh, which show are you doing? Like, what are you, like, shooting for? Which magazine can we see? It? I'm not really trying to stay healthy. I don't know, just, you know, I'm not going to gym. I'm not really doing any sports now. I mean, I used to do, but I used to do basketball and I'm a champion of Moscow twice. Yeah, I used to do ice skating too, which I still go, but not like just for fun, you know, but I was a little bit too tall for it. <laughs> I would love to study history. I don't know if I can, I mean, I don't know what I can do with the history afterwards, but it's very interesting for me, so I really want to go and just learn it. I'm really lucky that I'm here and um, I have a chance to travel, I have, to I have a chance to meet the people, I have a chance to do, you know, a lot of things, and um, I think I'm really blessed, yeah. At number seven, meet a model with a message, Allie. Back in February 2007, model Allie Michael had her first major runway show. Yeah, it's my first show ever. Yeah, it's today. Soon, she was walking in the A-list shows. But Allie's success had blossomed along with an eating disorder, rewarding weight loss with more and more prestigious jobs. To be honest, I never imagined that that I would fall into to that, that kind of mindset and those habits because 
I, I thought of myself as a fairly strong person, but I can really kind of just take a hold of anybody. And, and I think that I just got this mindset that um, this work was the most important thing in the world and I had to do anything and everything to be the best model that I could be. And I associated being the best model I could be with losing weight. And um, I, I definitely stopped enjoying it as much. In February 2008, after working with a nutritionist to restore her health, Allie bravely chose to speak out about her experience. It was something that made a big impact on my life and my story, so I wanted to share it. I don't think that it just affects models either. I think that it's evident that it affects girls everywhere. I do think that the fashion industry sends a message which then trickles down to those girls. So I do think that it's a problem. So I think that promoting an image of healthy beauty instead of, you know, an emaciated one is really important. Now my mindset is kind of, I, I am what I am, and I'm, I'm healthy, I exercise, I eat really well. It's just kind of like, I'm here, I'm enjoying it, and that's the most important thing, really. At number six, it's Denmark's lovely Louise Peterson. Danish superstar Louise Peterson struck a chord with the fashion industry from the moment she began her modeling career. And from the beginning, she was right on track. I started out in Denmark two years ago. I got spotted on the train. I didn't believe them at first, really. I was just laughing. I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, but then I, I was on my way to work at a hotel, but there was uh, a girl working there whose sister was a designer, so she knew about uh, May Anderson. Um, and May Anderson is with 2PM too, my agency. So she said that, yeah, they're totally, you know, okay. Louise got an early leg up from a renowned photographer. Mario Testino, of course, who has a lot of, I owe him a lot of credit <laughs> for my career. It's harder than I would think it would be. The first few shows, you have like the great big adrenaline rush and you're like, oh, whoa. But then when you get like this late on the week, you're like, just tired. Your legs hurt, your hair hurts, your head hurts, like everything just hurts. You meet so many exciting, creative people, famous people, and you get like all scared because you, you know how it is when you see famous people and you think you know them? And you're like about to say hi, but it's like, oh no, <laughs> it's <just a> famous. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. Yeah, definitely. Since the runway pays a lot more than the editorial, this is really stressful. And an editorial is like, you know, you, you go and you, you probably know the, the stylist or the makeup artist. And it's like, you know, it's, that's really nice. Um, so it's easier to do the editorial and more like comfortable. But this is really exciting too. I'm kind of more into rock and roll than I'm into classic stuff, I guess. If I would dress up finally, you know, because I don't get around to that much. As long as I'm having fun with it, and as long as I can make money doing it, you know. If I'm like not having fun and feeling sad all the time, I'm going to stop, of course. Landing at number five is Dutch beauty Daphne. Hi, my name is Stephanie uh, Groeneveld. I started like two years ago and I was scouted in uh, Amsterdam. I was shopping with my mom, but I was scouted like two times before. One time in Paris, but then I was only 30 years old and one time on the internet and then again in Amsterdam. So I thought maybe I could try it out. <laughs> But first of all, I thought we're gonna do it like really slowly so I can finish my school, but it was going really quick and now I'm here, so that's exciting. When we spoke with Daphne in 2012, she was just a teenager, still feeling her hometown roots. 
she brought a special someone from back home with her on the road. I'm from Holland and I live close to Amsterdam like 20 minutes ago in a small village and yeah, I still live there. My mom is always traveling with me because I'm only 16 years old so she thinks I'm kind of young. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'm still in high school. I made my exams like last year, but I didn't pass them, so I had to do it again, but it's fine. And with only a few seasons under her belt, Daphne had already graced the pages and covers of Elite magazines. Her extraordinary look quickly made her a favorite of top designers. I had a great season. I did some covers and I did the Louis Vuitton campaign and like she and she campaign it was two seasons ago but that was really great and the the cover of the French Vogue was of course a big honor and yeah I've done really great things. Every season is so different and every time it's you know it's exciting because you see all the collections every season and you know, the designers are doing a great job. It's hard work for them, and I love to be backstage with all the girls, and it's really nice. At number four, it's Aussie stunner, Abby Lee. Hi, I'm Abby Lee. I was scouted on the beach back in Australia when I was like 16. So I was very naive at that age, I didn't really understand it and I'm still learning. Um, you learn a lot about yourself, you spend a lot of time alone, travelling alone, um, learning to adapt to, to different situations and different cultures really quickly. Us girls are a lot younger than the, the stylists, the fashion editors, everybody that we work with, they're, they're adults, so I guess um, your maturity levels tend to um, strengthen really quickly. My family, just like I was when I was 16, are so far removed from the whole thing, like the whole industry. They've come overseas and travelled with me and then they got a taste of it and they understand it more, but they have always been, um, always had the attitude of as long as I'm happy, they're happy. So at the moment I'm happy, so they're stoked with what I'm doing and they're very supportive. Even a seasoned runway pro like Abby gets pre-show jitters. Oh, definitely. I mean, you, you're walking out in front of like hundreds of people that are all looking at you and there's the only light is a spotlight right at your, uh, your, your face, you know. Like, there's always going to be that um, nervous energy, which is good, I think. It, it pumps the adrenaline, gets it going. It means that you're excited and you actually care about the show. If you weren't nervous, I guess it wouldn't mean much to you. And it, why are you doing it if it doesn't mean much to you? So I, I quite enjoy the nervous, the nerves that come with it. I write and draw. I'd like to say that I paint, but unfortunately I don't have the time or the space to do that. But hopefully one day when I get a bigger place and the modeling quiet, quietens down a little bit, I'll do more of that. I didn't model full time until I was about 19. I, I sort of didn't take it seriously. I didn't. I, I didn't understand the, the great things that it can bring you. So at the moment, I'm just I'm just looking to see what else modeling can bring for me. You know, like you, you come across so many incredible people and the opportunities, and I'm sure that other doors are going to open for me. I don't know what they are yet, but I'm willing to just see what modeling can do for me rather than have a plan B. Meet number three on our countdown, Laura. It's obvious that the sexy curves of Dutch model Laura Stone have helped make her a household name. But her curious facial expressions might also have something to do with it. Should I laugh more? Because somebody else told me that as well, actually, two days ago. It was like, you, that was the first question to ask me, like, why don't you ever smile? <laughs> I just don't have a smiley face anyway, except when I'm talking to people and being like, whatever, normal. So, I don't know, maybe I'll try today. But Laura looks worried on the runway for a reason. My feet are so little and the shoes are always so big and then last season I fell over all the time. 
What size foot are you that, that's so tiny? Like a really small 37. They always fall off and I'm always, I always get so scared. Today it's good because everybody has flat shoes, so it's starting off well. I started modeling a long time ago when I was 13. Somebody, I was on, um, on holiday in Paris and we were with my whole family in the metro and this woman came up to me and asked me if I wanted to be a model. And I'm like, I just started laughing at her pretty much because it didn't really make any sense. And then my parents kind of liked the idea and they sent the pictures to the agency in Holland and, and um, then they did a competition, which I didn't win. And then I started working in Holland on the weekends until I was 16. And then I got thrown out of high school and then my mom sent me away to Paris. I want to backtrack to where you got kicked out of high school. Oh. <laughs> what was that for? Um, for being very naughty. <laughs> I'm really bad with um, authorities. And when people tell me what to do, I want to do the opposite. So that's exactly what I did for the longest time. And they were kind of over it after a while. So they just decided to throw me out. I lived in Paris for a year and then I decided I need to get some kind of diploma. So then I went to do this evening school in Holland, which is really easy. And we made a good deal with them that I had to, I only had to show up to make midterms. So I had to go to Holland every four months, every three or four months just to make some tests and then the final exam at the end of the year. And that was it. And then I graduated high school. So in the end, it seems as though mother really did know best. She was like, well, you want to do everything yourself anyway, and so fine, go for it, go away. <laughs> so, and it kind of worked out for the best, because she was right in that way that if she would have sent me to another school, the same thing would have happened. And I just had to do something on my own and take care of myself. And then, my, then I realized myself that I had to go back to school, so that was kind of her plan, and it worked out exactly the way she planned it. Laura later graduated to being the face of the legendary house of Calvin Klein in 2010. It's just such an absolute honor to be part of the iconic brand of Calvin Klein. Very happy. And her happiness continued. In 2013, the full lip beauty became the spokesmodel for L'Oreal Paris. Regardless of her success, Laura plans to take her career to new heights. I wanted to be a pilot for a really long time because I'm extremely afraid of flying and I have major panic attacks and everything. So then I figured I'll do it myself. And that's what I wanted to do. So I'll definitely get like a flying kind of license or something. But I don't think I want to spend the rest of my life in an airplane either. <laughs> so I don't really know. I'm still thinking about it. Runner up on our model countdown is Kenyan sensation Ajuma. Former Olympic hopeful Ajuma Nasanyana is going for the gold in terms of her modeling career. I ran for Kenya. I did um, 800 and 400 meters athletics, but I, I just dropped off before the Olympics. Yeah, so that's what I was actually training for. My friends, my teachers, they always told me, oh, you should be a model, you know, I was like, how am I going to get into it? You know, you say it so much, but I mean, I don't know how to get into it. I don't know how to get into it. That was the thing that held me back. Yeah, but eventually I was seen by somebody. <laughs> I was seen actually in Kenya by a Ford agent. I came here to New York and I did the Ford Supermodel and I came fourth runner up. So I got the contract with New York. As fourth runner up, Ajuma also earned her place in history. She became the first black model ever to win a contract in an international modeling competition. It's been really great. It's very hectic. Well, I just finished boarding school, so it's really fun for me to be able to travel around and see the different places. It's very exciting. So I'm just waiting around to see what will happen in the next year or two, and then I decide. But I would also like to study, yeah. I want to do, okay, this is horrible. I want to do anatomy. <laughs> I, I want to do human biology. I really like that, just to study the human body. A lot of people wanted me to run, to be an athlete. Yeah, but my family, they're very supportive and they, they go with what I want. You know, they can't really push me into something I don't want. They respect what I, what I want to do. 
topping our list with the most proud appeal is Lindsay Wixon. Hi, I'm Lindsay Wixon. I think I have my dad's eyebrows. I have a mixture of my mom and dad's nose, my dad's face shape, and I have his dimples and his gap. I don't know where I get my lips from. I, I can't tell you that. It's like a mystery thing. I was found in Wichita, Kansas, where I live, um, by a scout. I went to LA, I shot for Italian Vogue with Steven Mizell. A week and a half later, flew to New York from LA. Yeah, I thought I could do it. People kept telling me I could, I could model, you could be a model, like, just out of the blue. It was just like random people just approaching me. I was interested in it. I was like, well, what do I have to do to be this model? What do I have to accomplish? And I just watched the fashion shows and I learned the designers and the photographers that all like the supermodels were working with. And I was like, okay, I know who I need to work with. I know what I need to do. And I was just persistent. Wichita, it's not so conservative, it's not like the 50s where like everyone has to button their shirt up. It's pretty laid back in Wichita. It's the suburbs, but it's not the countryside, it's not a farm. I haven't milked a cow every day, I haven't like shoveled the manure, you know. In 2010, New York Sotheby's Gallery showcased a photo exhibit of Lindsay called I Remain You Desire by Gabrielle Revere. She's the most passionate and sweet person. We worked together on a story for life and she took a series of pictures of me like candid and not candid and like backstage in, in the model's apartment, like everywhere. I'm definitely happy to be in front of the camera and it's kind of second nature now. I've definitely grown and I feel like I can handle any situation really. I've experienced a lot working in fashion and sort of making goals for myself and working it out. <laughs> it's really become a whole new world, like a different world than I, than I was grown up into. I've taken my vitamins and um, I'm prepared. So these are our picks for the top lips on the runway. Who did you choose?